December 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Zechariah chapters 11 and 12 from the Old Testament. Open your gates, Lebanon, so that the fire may consume your cedars. Howl, fir tree, because the cedar has fallen, the majestic trees have been destroyed. Howl, oaks of Bashan, because the impenetrable forest has fallen. Listen to the howling of shepherds, because their magnificence has been destroyed. Listen to the roaring of young lions, because the thickets of the Jordan have been devastated. The Lord, my God, says this, Shepherd the flock set aside for slaughter. Those who buy them slaughter them and are not held guilty. Those who sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. Their own shepherds have no compassion for them. Indeed, I will no longer have compassion on the people of the land, says the Lord. But instead I will turn every last person over to his neighbor and his king. They will devastate the land and I will not deliver it from them. So I began to shepherd the flock destined for slaughter, the most afflicted of all the flock. Then I took two staffs, calling one pleasantness and the other binders, and I tended the flock. Next I eradicated the three shepherds in one month. For I ran out of patience with them, and indeed, they detested me as well. I then said, I will not shepherd you. What is to die, let it die, and what is to be eradicated, let it be eradicated. As for those who survive, let them eat each other's flesh. Then I took my staff pleasantness and cut it into two to annul my covenant that I had made with all the people. So it was annulled that very day, and then the most afflicted of the flock, who kept faith with me, knew that that was the word of the Lord. Then I said to them, If it seems good to you, pay me my wages, but if not, forget it. So they weighed out my payment, thirty pieces of silver. The Lord then said to me, Throw to the potter that exorbitant sum at which they valued me. So I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them to the potter at the temple of the Lord. Then I cut the second staff binders in two in order to annul the covenant of brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Again the Lord said to me, Take up once more the equipment of a foolish shepherd. Indeed, I am about to raise up a shepherd in the land who will not take heed to the sheep headed to slaughter, will not seek the scattered, and will not heal the injured. Moreover, he will not nourish the one that is healthy, but instead will eat the meat of the fat sheep and tear off their hooves. Woe to the worthless shepherd who abandons the flock. May a sword fall on his arm and his right eye. May his arm wither completely away and his right eye become completely blind. The Revelation of the Word of the Lord Concerning Israel The Lord, he who stretches out the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth, who forms the human spirit within a person, says, I am about to make Jerusalem a cup that brings dizziness to all the surrounding nations. Indeed, Judah will also be included when Jerusalem is besieged. Moreover, on that day I will make Jerusalem a heavy burden for all the nations, and all who try to carry it will be seriously injured, yet all the peoples of the earth will be assembled against it. In that day, says the Lord, I will strike every horse with confusion and its rider with madness. I will pay close attention to the house of Judah, but will strike all the horses of the nations with blindness. Then the leaders of Judah will say to themselves, The inhabitants of Jerusalem are a means of strength to us through their God, the Lord who rules over all. On that day I will make the leaders of Judah like an igniter among sticks and a burning torch among sheaves, and they will burn up all the surrounding nations right and left. Then the people of Jerusalem will settle once more in their place, the city of Jerusalem. The Lord also will deliver the homes of Judah first, so that the splendor of the kingship of David and of the people of Jerusalem may not exceed that of Judah. On that day the Lord himself will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the weakest among them will be like mighty David, and the dynasty of David will be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. So on that day I will set out to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. 
I will pour out on the kingship of David and the population of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication so that they will look to me, the one they have pierced. They will lament for him as one laments for an only son, and there will be a bitter cry for him like the bitter cry for a firstborn. On that day, the lamentation in Jerusalem will be as great as the lamentation at Hadad Rimen in the plain of Megiddo. The land will mourn clan by clan, the clan of the royal household of David by itself and their wives by themselves, the clan of the family of Nathan by itself and their wives by themselves, the clan of the descendants of Levi by itself and their wives by themselves, and the clan of the Shemites by itself and their wives by themselves, all the clans that remain, each separately with their wives. God, it's interesting that the story of the shepherds is in this particular section of Zechariah. I was just meeting with someone the other night and doing some early discipleship work uh, with them. And they were asking that question about, uh, does God ever leave us? Uh, and it's a little bit of a hard question to answer to a new believer. But, you know, we talk about that you'll never leave them, you'll never forsake them, uh, you take them by the right hand and walk alongside them. Uh, we talk about all those things, but but we also have to be completely transparent and talk about you giving people up to their sin, to their choices, to their idols. In this case, uh, same kind of similar thing, uh, turning them over to a shepherd that won't take care of them. And I think of, I think of my life and how you had every right and every opportunity to take your hand off of me. And you may possibly have done that because for so long I pursued my selfish, sinful desires. Maybe at a certain point you just got tired of me doing it and said, fine, if that's what you want, Janelle, then you can have that. I'm just going to take my hands off of you and let you have sin as your master, have sin as your God, have sin as your idol. But I think the crucial piece of this is that you never stop loving us and you never stop seeking reconciliation. That's the important part that we can't leave out. That even if you take your hands off your people in this story or you took your hands off of me at a certain point of my life and gave me up to the things of Satan and the things of the world that I was seeking, you did so out of love and continued working on that reconciliation. And then there was this amazing time in my life where <laughs> I almost envisioned in my head you saying, all right, now that's enough. Like, <laughs> I'm tired of this. And you started taking people out of my life, situations out of my life, jobs out of my life, money out of my life, possessions out of my life, so that it could clear the way for me to see you and realize that the choices I had been making were so incredibly wrong. And it, it honestly wasn't that you made that decision for me. You just gave me a chance to see the truth. And my life had been so clouded by my choices and by Satan's sparkly things for my life that I was having a very, very difficult time seeing the truth. God, I am so thankful, one, that you took your hand off me because I know it taught me so much, not only to be grateful for, but taught me so much during that time that I was pursuing the wrong life. It has helped me so much when I do discipleship training with other people. I also thank you so much for the blessings of showing me the truth, of giving me back my true shepherd, the one who truly loves me, the one who truly cares about me, the one who made me, and building up between you and I a relationship one that was always there for you, one that I had to figure out, and I still, till the day I die, will be figuring it out. God, I love you so much. I'm completely baffled at all that you've given me. 
none of which I deserve. But I am truly thankful that you love me enough 